So I've got two examples. Um, back in 2017, I think Haring, Haringey, Haringey Council, don't even know how to pronounce that, somewhere in England, I think. Uh, so they plan to set what's known as a joint venture vehicle, apparently, uh, which is basically, as I understand it, a business arrangement between a number of parties. Um, and it was with like some Australian multinational property developer. And like the first part of this plan would have included um, the transfer of Northumberland Park housing estate, uh, which is I think one of the largest in that um, council region, along with like a bunch of smaller estates and individual housing properties over to this um, joint venture vehicle. And, you know, these would have been like demolished and be re got replaced with like pretty much largely private housing with uh, reduced tenancy protections for any remaining social housing tenants. Um, so, you know, there's a broad opposition from like both members of the public and political parties and other local individuals in the community. Um, but what, um, what this, so uh, basically a campaign group formed around this and what they found was like lots of the councillors assessment reports weren't publicly shared um, and only and, or the only consultation that was held was like an informal survey at a like a fun fair day or something like that um, asking people whether they supported better, better quality housing I mean like of course you do most people said yes right so they that was their basis for like actually you know making these decisions so one of um, the contributions to the campaign was like the assessment of information released through existing FOI requests and putting in a few new ones to fill some data gaps. Um, they basically had a little team making these FOI requests and keeping track of all the responses and actually like collated and summarized uh, all this information and reports um, and used that as a basis of a legal challenge. Um, one element that came up repeatedly um, and helped sway public opinion was the the they got information on the when meetings were held so you know they got like diaries that kind of thing but there were no minutes there were no records so it kind of you know showed how like not transparent all this process was um and you know led them to believe there was like a huge degree of secrecy at play um, so another element revealed through FI in this uh, case study was that um, the property developers were meeting not only with key council officials, but other significant public bodies as well. Um, and the, the meetings were officially consultative, um, but the minutes showed them actually making important decisions as to how um, the places should be redeveloped. Uh, so no representatives or local re residents um, of small or medium businesses uh, had any equivalent access to any, the public authorities in this way um, with all the direct and indirect influence implied. Um, so uh, while councillors were like verbally assuring the community that social housing was being protected, the reality of the paperwork showed commitment to like only 30 odd percent of affordable homes. Um, which is, you know, pretty um, different to what they were saying in public. Uh, I think they had like a 10,000 people waiting list. So, you know, th this wasn't just like, a, or, you know, they had a big problem of social housing and were like publicly committing to um, social housing. And yet, you know, these records showed otherwise. Um, and all that came out through FOI. Um, and then, yeah, they also found like repeated examples of large amounts of public money being given to these developers. Um, so again, like getting um, budgets from uh, from FOI and um, like uh, you know balance sheet type information, like that is also be helpful for building up this picture of like what is actually happening. Um, and then they actually ended up taking this to court. They, they, they did lose the legal case, um, but one element that was found in their favor was that the council had failed in their duty to consult. Um, and that had all been confirmed by FOI requests by you know the fact that they just didn't have any um, meeting minutes or like you know any meaningful evidence that they had done this consultation. Um, 
so the the campaign group said they basically never expected to win the whole campaign via the courts um you know and any win would uh, would have only meant that they would be required to like amend the process like the law wouldn't have actually helped stop the plan but their main aim was to like actually delay the signing of the con contact with this um uh you know the, what i can't remember what it was called now uh, the big group thing anyway uh long enough then uh, new council elections would come about because what happened basically was that the 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 new councillors um, having or the, the the people running for election had heard about all this stuff and were like no way like that can't happen so new councillors got voted in and they were more sympathetic to the cause and actually halted all this development so you know this all took about like two long hard years but it's a like a concrete example of how you can build this picture using trend you know transparency laws and data to like actually figure out what's happening on the inside um final example um of some really really good journalism from uh the bureau of investigative journalism they um ran this sold from under you project which revealed uh how much publicly owned property had been sold off across England um, as a response to austerity measures. Um, I think they discovered that like about 12,000 or more buildings and pieces of land had been disposed of across all the councils um, and bringing in revenue of like nine billion pounds, something like that. Um, so this project basically uh, pieced together like a huge nationwide data set. Um, and it ended up generating stories both nationally and, you know, in like local press as well. Um, they actually use what they know pro to collect um, all this information from like 700 FOI requests to like 350 local councils. Uh, and they had a group of like more than 150 people across the UK, uh, including local journalists who took part in this collaborative investigation. And obviously this is like a huge scale, like a huge, um, increase in scale and complexity to what you're doing but the thing they did really really well in this and i think you know a, a smaller group could replicate on a smaller scale was they used all this data to like actually map out where all these properties were sold off so that gives you this you know real factual picture of what what had happened and the values of all this stuff that has been sold off you know to private companies but they also combined this with stories, going back to what I was just saying about, um, you know, telling stories to your MPs. Like they went and interviewed people in the community who had been affected by these sell-offs. I think one of the examples was uh, a gym being sold, which, you know, had like made a real impact in um, one of the more deprived areas. And like this ended up creating loads of different stories. Um, you know, I, I don't know exactly like what changed after this per se, but um, I'm pretty sure it led to a couple of inquiries in a couple of local councils. But it's it, it, the way you use this transparency data can really add like weight behind individual stories. And I think the mix of the two is like one of the most important things um, campaign groups like this should be looking at trying to do. Um, so got a couple of uh, like, or a bunch more case studies, which we can send you. Um, around you know how people have used FOI and hopefully that will be like inspiring to you in terms of like how you can figure out how to replicate what groups are doing in a with a different problem but how you can use that those ideas in the the problem domain of um, temporary spaces. Um, I've got another bunch of case studies um, so again, another one here is like looking at freedom of information and asbestos in schools, which I remember having like a really good result. Um, and then we've got a couple of how to guides as well, which we're trying to work more on, like how to just like actually use all this data that comes out of uh, what they know. So um, I will take a breath and open to any questions uh, that you may have and how I can help. Thank you, Gareth. That was super interesting. That was really good. Um, there are a couple of